Wood Turners, I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. Today I have a project for you. There's no lathe, no turning, no spinning wood. This came about from something I said on one of my videos. I said I could show you how to touch up and sharpen a Forstner bit. Well today I've got an old Forstner bit and we're going to make it look really good. But more than that, we're going to make it cut. You know what you got to do now? You got to watch. Let's get started with the Forstner bit. This is a brand new one and three quarter inch I just picked up at the saw shop around the corner. It cost me $35. Now I went to Home Depot and Lowe's today and they didn't have anything over an inch and a quarter. Don't know why they would bother. Forstner bits are mainly made to go for the larger sizes. But that's all they had. <clears throat> Pardon me. And they were all over $25. Wow. You may want to chalk this up to big time savings when it's all over with. Now, this is an older Forstner bit. Looks kind of raggedy, doesn't it? Well, let me talk to you a little bit about what a Forstner bit does and how it cuts. Let's say we're looking up at the we're looking at the bottom of this bit. This is what we see. What you've seen, you're seeing on a new bit, is this edge is sharpened like a cutting surface right here. This edge and this edge that's here and here. Now let me get a little bit closer. That's here and here. These are sharpened like a cutting surface. Here's the deal. All these you don't touch. What do you touch? You touch this one. Looking at it from the side. You touch that surface. That's here. That's that big flat surface that you have in a bit. Now I'm going to get a little bit closer when we can. I'll get a little bit better light on the separate. But this surface right here, that's the one we're going to sharpen. That's the only one. Why? If we touch any of this on the outside, or any of this on a flat, we will affect the dynamics of how the bit cuts. What I'm saying is if you change this, it won't run true. If you change this, it won't run true to the flat. So the dynamics of the cut are determined upon the outside diameter and these two flats. We don't want to touch those. We probably didn't damage them. But we can probably do is touch this right here. That's this big shiny flat spot right there. And the one on the other side. If we touch those, we'll go back to putting an edge on that thing right there. Now to recap. This is the old bit I have. You can see I've got rusty scale on this blade this blade. I've got some rust down inside here. I went and got this out of my old toolbox. It looks pretty beat up. See that surface? I touched that one up a little while ago. It looked like this when I first pulled it out the box. A little bit of pitting. It's not very sharp. Almost no edge there. This thing burns wood out the way but doesn't cut very efficiently. If this bit was covered with pitch tar from pine or burn or whatever, I would put on some rubber gloves and some eyewear, get up my spray cleaner for ovens, easy off spray cleaner, sprayed it, brushed it a little bit, and washed it off, and then coated it with WD-40 because the cleaner is very corrosive. I did say my rubber gloves and my eyewear. That's caustic soda. You have to be careful. And then when you get done and you wash your hands, a little baking soda wouldn't hurt either. Alrighty. Now, this is what we're dealing with. What are we looking to accomplish? That is a sharp bit. Let me see if I can turn it so you see that? That is the cutting face. Right here. That's the cutting face. One on both sides. All this does is guide the bit and establish an outside hole. That edge and that face 
See if I get it in the right line for you. That edge and that face do the cutting. One here, one here. If you understand how the forcing a bit works, then you're going to understand what we're going to do to sharpen it. We're going to take this and with a very fine red, which is the fine, diamond stone, we're going to touch that face up. I can't use my DMT because it's too thick and it won't fit in there. I can't find the diamond card I normally have hanging on my grinder, probably left at a Freedom Panel event. But this works very good. Now this was fairly cheap. It was at Harbor Freight, three of them for ten bucks, so you know it can't be too great. But it's still got a little grit on it and it still sharpens. You want to have it near the edge of a table or a bench. So you can hold it onto the bench and get past it. Now I guess I better widen out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Alright, get right here. And you want to stroke it. You want to feel it and then you want to stroke it. Feel it because you want to be going very flat. You don't want to change the face of that cutter. You just want to clean it up and sharpen it. If you go too deep on the angle towards the cutter, you'll get the cutter too steep. If you go away from it, you didn't do anything to it. But stop occasionally and see if you are sharpening that edge. Be sure you sharpen it, go back into it again. You'll feel it. And then you got about 10 passes, check the edge you will feel a noted difference in that edge once you've got it stroked or, or sharpened. I count my laps so I can do the same thing on the other side. Oh yeah, that is much better. I'll go over here. I did this side 20 times. Feel it. Much better. Much better. That blade will now go back into use, been able to cut. If I'm really particular about the look of it, and I want to clean it up and get the little pitting rust off the outside and all, I won't sand it. I would soda blast it. To soda blast something, I resort to this. This is another little cheapy sandblaster. Uh, another one of my Harbor Freight specials. You load it in the top, you put about 70-80 pounds of pressure on it, and you, you soda blast. It's safer and easier than sandblasting and accomplishes almost the same thing. But soda is softer, doesn't eat away so much material, won't change the configuration very much, but it'll clean up all this. Tell you what I'm going to do. Soda blast it and show it to you. Take a look at this. This is the one I just took outside and soda blast it. It took about 30 seconds. I used baking soda, which I buy at Sam's in the 10, 5 or 10 pound bag. This is the brand new one. Cleaned up, got all the rust, all the pitting, all the stuff off of it. Didn't fix the pitting, it just cleaned it up. And I, I'm, I mean it, it feels sharper after the soda blasting. Because I cleaned off the little surface rust that was on those two blades. Well, there you go. We took a raggedy old bit, cleaned it up, cleaned it first. Then we touched up the edges, put a little sharp back on it, and we took a $35 drill bit that was burning wood and made it into a $35 drill bit that's not burning wood, and we saved that $35. Now, that night, that sharpening thing cost maybe three of them, four, something, something, something. But if you got a card already, it works. Oh, file won't do it. This is tool steel. File is not going to get it. You do need to sharpen it. Most stones won't fit in here, so go for a diamond card. The next thing, 
that little soda blaster, that's a dangerous tool. Let me tell you what will happen if you get that soda blaster. You will start stacking up stuff out on your soda blasting table, which is just the table outside because the stuff doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't hurt the environment. Tastes like that toothpaste that we used to use as a kid. It's good stuff. It'll clean up all kinds of things. I use it to clean the jaws on my chuck. I take them off the chuck first. Takes all the finish off. I use it to clean up monkey wrenches, stilts and wrenches, crescent wrenches, and everything else. I've got pliers and screwdrivers that might have got a little moisture and a little bit of corrosion on them. <laughs> clean them all up. Wipe them down with some 3 in 1 oil. You remember 3 in 1 oil. Do you have any around the shop? I remember it. I got a can of it right there. Now I can do that and you can't see, so you don't know if I'm faking you out or not, huh? It's up there. I'd pull it out and show you, but it's up there. But wipe it down with a little three in one oil. Just one pass over it. Because you removed all the protectants and all the protection and you've exposed bare metal to the elements. So if you just remove the rust, don't put don't let it get back on there. Wipe it down with a little three in one oil. So, and the other things you clean up with would hurt to clean them up with a little bit of oil too, wouldn't it? Just a little bit, not enough. And I'm really not keen on that spray W stuff all over tools and all. Yeah, it's a good water displacement compound with a light lubricant in it. I'll probably hear from those folks who are telling you this, but nothing replaces a good old fashioned three in one oil or something very, very similar. So give that a try. All right, now. I've sharpened up a bit. I've saved $35. I can go over here, put it in a lake to make me a wine bottle stop that looks like a, a dunce cap and then another one that looks like Abraham Lincoln's hat and all this stuff. And I can do it with sharp bits because i got to get back to making shavings. And I want to thank you for joining me. Hope I saved you some money and helped you out a little bit. Take care now. Oh, don't forget, you need me? Check me out on my website, www.eddiecastellan.com or drop me an email at eddiecastle on at cox.net. And don't forget, we're live Wednesday nights, 7, 8 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Ustream TV. Look up Making Shavings on Ustream TV. There's a link on the front page of my website in case you lose it. See ya! I gotta take the whole rest of these boxes. All these soda bits outside. Every one of them is soda blast them. You, you see what happens? Oh, hey, I got one more thing for you. Because I never stop, right? Let me show you this. You see that? That's a little plastic pencil case from Walmart. And between, 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 between school seasons, they're in a closeout section for about 40 cents. That is an awesome case for drill bits, taps, all kinds of things. Look. You see that rack? That rack over my drill press? That's what's in them. That works great for storing bits and other things. And they snap lock too. And they stack up. If you don't have a rack, you can just stack them on a shelf. You're doing pens? Put your pen kits in there. You'll love it. See? Always here trying to find something.